Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about the feature of C-Shop called Boxing and Unboxing which allows to do some things in C-Shop but it does come with a performance penalty and a memory location penalty. Now, I'm going to try to break it down for you because it can be a confusing topic because we're going to have to talk about memory location as well and we're going to talk about the stack and the heap but I'm going to try to explain it as simply as possible so you understand it. And we're also going to run a few benchmarks to see how it will impact our code in terms of performance as well because there is a penalty there. Whatever you learn of this video should not make you go back to your code and change anything this is not about this this is about knowing that this feature exists understanding how it works and the next time you write some code you might find an alternative around it but sometimes it's just not preventable and you have to understand that yeah this will happen and it's fine but you should know about it if you like that type of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe and the same notification bell to get alerted when i upload a new video so what do i have here well, I can go in that boxing and unboxing uh, program.cs and I have a main method and the easiest way to explain boxing is just the most basic example uh, I have an int, um, I don't know, some number, some random number um, and this is a value type, it's an integer inside a method so in that context this value type will be allocated on the stack which is a very efficient very fast um, memory allocation and once we're outside of that frame the memory doesn't exist anymore so that is good but there is the ability to create some number object with the object class and then implicitly convert from an integer to the object i didn't have to cast it i didn't have to do anything i'm just saying create an object based on that integer and that is basically boxing why is it called boxing well because since object is a reference type allocated on the heap you have to put that some number variable in a box and allocate it on the heap because object is a reference type and you can actually if i pull up the il viewer the intermediate language viewer and if i compile this you should be able to see here the box instruction and this happens as you can see exactly on that step now this might not be quite as clear as i'd want it to be in terms of you know showing you the memory location so instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to debug this and we're going to take a look at the memory itself so rider supports this uh, memory window and i will load all the memory here and this is what you would see in the, on the heap and you can see strings and a bunch of other uh, stuff here and then when i step over that some number i've created my um, int and if i reload the memory you'll see there is no difference because nothing was allocated on the heap here so i will go over this object line as well and i'm gonna load classes and now you can see i have a difference plus one of 24 bytes which is our system.int32 and if i double click you will see the memory address and the 420 value of the integer so this shows us that yes indeed this object will be allocated on the heap and will box this integer now how about the opposite thing how about getting the integer outside of the object well if i say unboxed here equals some number object you see how this conversion is not implicit i have to explicitly say that hey please unbox this for me and before i run this i'm gonna go back to the aisle viewer i'm gonna rebuild this and as you can see here i have this unbox uh, dot any instruction on the IL, which will unbox my boxed object back into an integer and if i run the memory allocator again the memory uh, debugging tool then you'll see let me just step over that and load classes uh step over that again and load you see the difference the value is here and then step over unboxed and you can see that nothing changed memory wise we just unbox that integer again um, but we still have if i search for int uh, 32 we still have that 420 allocated because the sum number object exists um, so uh, the, the problem with that operation is a couple of things first this conversion is slow and this conversion is also slow microsoft says that this is 20 times more expensive than a normal um, assignment and by this i mean the boxing and the unboxing is four times slower 
Um, so you can understand that if you have it in many places, it can add up. However, I don't think that it's obvious all the time. And what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to show you uh, something. Let me just comment this out. Let's create an array of ints. And I'm going to do that using the um, enumerable uh, class. And I'm going to say range and give me a range from uh, I don't know, 69 and give me 420 items. And I'm going to say to array. And this would create that array. And then I'm going to create an array list equals new array list, which as you can see is not generic. It will just accept anything and create that array list. So now if I debug this and go back to that um, memory tool here and load classes, you're going to see that. Um, not much is happening, but then I step over that. Obviously, this will allocate because an array is a reference type. You will see a bunch of things allocated, but the thing that you care about is this uh, array with 420 items. And you can see starting from 69 all the way to 488. So this is our array allocated on the heap. And now we're going to create this array list and step over that and load classes. And now you can see 420 integers, individual integers, also located on the heap with an individual address for each one of them. In case you haven't noticed, this is also boxing because an array list, if I go inside, is storing. Um, and let me just go back to the, the, the root element that's storing. I think it's called items. Yes, it's an array of objects. And in order to store objects, it will box them. So you might not notice it as you're working on it, but it will actually perform boxing behind your back in a sense. While if you used a generic list like this, list of um, integers, and I can do that with an array, uh, not array list, array of ints. And let me just quickly import that. Then let me just debug this again so I can show you what's happening. Um, and yeah, and let me just load the memory so we can see the difference. One here, um, the array allocated. Second one here, the, the 420 individual ones. And uh, how can I show you this? Yes. And an array of 420 objects as well was allocated because it's the item within the array list. But then here, if I step over and I load classes again, you see the difference is two things. It is a single array in this scenario of 420 items instead of allocating each one of those individual items from the boxing. So generic list will actually solve that problem in this specific scenario. Now, you can't always know what's going on behind the scenes, and most likely is that things will get boxed. But if you can prevent it on your end, then please do. Now, what I have in this uh, .benchmarks project is a benchmark.net application, which will run some benchmarks. Uh, this following four, actually, it will try, if I go to the boxing service, it will try to uh, box a value, unbox a value, um, and then just simply return and simply return object. And this will show you the difference between this being a boxed operation or unboxed operation or just a direct return. And obviously the direct thing will return faster, but we want to know how much faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change that to benchmarks and this to release because I want the most optimized version of the IL code. Um, and then I'm going to click execute and I'm going to let this run. And after a couple of minutes, results are back. And as you can see, the box value operation is almost two nanoseconds. The and box is 0 0.0215 nanoseconds. And then you can see the simple return and simple return object are even slower. And the boxing also had a GUBS collection, obviously Gen 0 and 24 bytes, which is that single integer. That being said, both speed and memory are concerns. Speed will just make your application slower. Memory allocation will cause the uh, GUBS collector to have to collect all the dangling uh, items after they have been dereferenced. So it will put pressure to your program and during you know GUBS collection, everything freezes. So there's that. Now, this is not something you should just go to your code and change anything about and try to find out and fix. It doesn't need fixing. This is all about you knowing it exists and prevent it in the future if you can. 99.999% of the time, this will not be a problem, but it will be useful for you to understand how the language you're using works in certain places. And that's basically what this video is about. That's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. 
leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.